This podcast episode is brought to you by Uncaged with RobinAnn.com, where virtuous women dominate in purpose, passion, and purity. Tired of being sabotaged by perfectionism and procrastination? Finding it hard to focus on one thing long enough to make real progress? Ready to do whatever it takes to get that passion project done? Then the Women Who Finish 40-Day Devotional Book is for you. In this book, Robin Ann coaches you through mindset shifts to fulfill God's call in your life and truly harness your ability to finish what you start instead of feeling stuck and frustrated with where you are. Get your devotional book now at robinann.com forward slash IG. There's no way around this. If you're going to upgrade your career, that means leveling up your self-awareness. You can't determine your career goals or even what steps to take until you get honest about what kind of life you want and what you value. So often we ascribe to a career path that's not really our own. It's essential here to get in tune with yourself and know what our sincere motivators are. In this episode, I talked to fellow coach Cassandra Williams, a career talk with Cassandra.com about leveling up your career by knowing what you truly want. All right. Welcome, 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 Cassandra, to the She Ventures Now podcast. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited because we've gotten a chance to get to know each other. And it just seems like there's such a synergy, right? Like in connecting with each other, not only <laughs> online, but um, through the work that we're doing as career coaches, as women who want to encourage other women like us to do their best work and to show up in the world the way that they desire. And so what I wanted to do is just to kind of pause and allow for you to introduce yourself so people can understand who you are and what you're about. Sure. Um, so again, I'm Cassandra Holtzclaw, and uh, I like to say by day, I'm the head of HR for a healthcare company based here in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, by night, or uh, what I like to call my passion project <laughs> that I get to work on, um, is I do some career coaching for women, women of color in particular, because that's just where my passion is leading me and where I feel like we um, could really use help. Right. Um, as well as um, I've had, I have two brands. I have Career Talk with Cassandra, which is a career coaching brand um, mm -hmm. focused on helping women uh, identify what they're passionate about and um, elevate to the next level in their careers. And then I also have Coins Over Gossip um, yeah. that is Yes, <laughs> which is more so of a leadership development brand for women of color, and that is empowering women in the workforce to pursue that next level um, in their career, that next level of leadership, and get more seats at the table. This is great. You know what I love about hearing uh, your <laughs> background and your bio is that I don't feel crazy, right? Like I feel from you <laughs> that I get this vibe that you're on a mission, that you have a day job, you have full life, right? A full life of responsibilities, but you are making space for your passion projects and you really want to serve and impact people. So I'm just thrilled again to have you on the podcast. I feel like we're sisters, you know, in this. Yeah. So here's the first question. How did you become you? Because I know... Um, you know, we create these profiles of ourselves on, on our websites and our brands. And a lot of times, and this is why I created this podcast, is for people to hear the story. So how did you become you? What, <laughs> um, I would say that um, for some reason when I was younger, uh, I was kind of seen as the, like, voice of reason, like, in my group of friends. So. Right. They would always come to me. I don't know how I became so wise to them, but <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy like being kind of put on that wisdom pedestal. But they um they would always come to me for advice, and I enjoy coaching them about just random things, you know, like boyfriends or <laughs> mm -hmm. you know 
what should I do about this situation in school? So I um I did a lot of that at a young age. And um later on as a high school student, um, I got connected with my mom because my grandparents raised me and then I kind of reconnected with my mother when I was in high school. So I spent a lot of time with her and she was a businesswoman. So she, I would see her go to work every day with her (laughs) business suit and she'd be preparing for presentations at work. And Mm -hmm. um, I was always curious, like, what do you do? You know, who, what do you do every day? You know, she gets dressed up and then I see her, you know, working um, on different things for work. And um, I listen to her conversations that she's having with people that she works with. And it was just very interesting to me. Just seeing her with the briefcase, the suit, and listening to those conversations. And I went into college trying to figure out, okay, how do I blend my love for helping people and advising right. people with, like, this whole business world? So for a long time in college, I didn't really understand how to get there and what that looked like as a career. Right. Um, not until, like, my senior year um, when I figured out that, I wanted to pursue um, human resources. So I kind of identified, okay, that kind of sounds a lot like what it is that I want to do. So after college, I got an internship with the largest hospital corporation in the world here in Nashville. And uh, I started out in their diversity department, which was really interesting. So I got to work with some really cool people. My boss was amazing and she kind of helped guide me with, you know, the understanding like, okay, I told her like, I want to be an HR consultant. And she's like, you've got to be more specific. Like, what does that mean? So she kind of helped guide my career and um, I started pursuing HR. But even when I was in college trying to figure out what those things looked like, like the helping people and the business I did everything. Like, I just signed up for everything. So I would be like a research intern or (laughs) I would, um, I just did these random jobs. I was just open to to learning everything. And I went away to UT Knox for a summer and did like the Ronald McNair Scholars Program. So I was pretty well-rounded and just open to learning everything that I could regardless if you know, if it was different from what I was trying to pursue at that time. So I think, I think that helped me too in my career and kind of get to the point where I'm at today. Cause um, through that process, I learned a lot about myself, like what I like, what I don't like. Right. Um, and yeah. And then I'm here, you know, now in a leadership role in human resources. So I know that's a long story, but that's a little bit about my journey. No, it's a real story. And I think I appreciated hearing distinct moments of you talking about having a mentor or somebody giving some guidance, like her checking you and saying, what does that really mean? And then on the same time, it sounds like you had opportunities to explore what it is, all of the spectrum of HR, all of the spectrum of your interests. So that's really cool. So my next question is, is, and and this is more of the juice, Cassandra, right? Like, (laughs) you know, you lead Coins Over Gossip, you lead... um, Career talks with Cassandra, your brand, and I'm sure there's a, there's a, a measure, and I feel like because a lot of times entrepreneurship or you know being in corporate America gets glamorized. But one of the reasons I started this podcast is to have the juice given, right? The stories that we don't often tell, like the setbacks and the failures, the things that we don't necessarily put on our resume, right? <laughs> but they actually okay. make who we are. And I want to allow for a moment for you to tell. Um, a little bit about your story, your failures, your blunders, your setbacks, because there are people who are looking up to you and want to know more about the humanity of how you got to where you are, even with the failures. Sure. Um, so the failures, I, I would say in the beginning of my career, um, I got in my own way a lot. Really? (laughs) I did because I, um, when you when you're in college and you're preparing for like that next level like entering the workforce for some reason i think our expectations are like way up here and then like when you're just starting out it's not that's not what it is like 
the standard for salary, my salary expectations for one were just not appropriately set. <laughs> really? So for some reason, I think the standard for salary um, was like, okay, when you graduate, you're going to make at least $40,000 a year. But I, for some reason, I thought that was like entry level pay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, it was hot. You know, <laughs> I, I, I did not start off making $40,000 a year. Um, so uh, I kind of went in with it, it was a little bit of a shock. Like, how much are you offering me? You know, I started yeah. off making like 13 bucks an hour. Um, and I I had an apartment because I didn't have any family in Nashville, so I was on my own. And this was like kind of like outside of college, like my real first. Oh crap! You know I'm yeah. really on my own. Yeah. Um, and I have to figure this out. So um, with that, you know, I I was shocked about the pay, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to figure that out, and how I'm going to pay all these bills with the salary that I'm being offered. Um, and then also just kind of having a lack of confidence as well, because you're in this completely different world, right? Like it looks so different from my college experience. And I'm, you know, it's where you people, um, you can't trust people, you know, yeah. like, like you probably could when you were in college, you know, everybody doesn't have your best interests at heart. So when you're a student, you know, you kind of have that security blanket because everybody, teachers, staff, you know, they're all rooting for you and trying to do what they can to help you get to the next level versus getting into this workforce environment where you're like competing, you know, and that you feel the competition and, you know, somebody's ready to throw you under the bus or, you know, you just go through all of these different things that you're not used to. And that played with my confidence a little bit. Um, early on in my career and I'm like can I really do this maybe I should just do what they're telling me that they think I'm good at right now and just focus on that instead of you know expressing my desire to be at this level like maybe I just need to stay here for a little while and and see what I need to do just almost like waiting to be told you know what to do as opposed to really taking control of the situation, being proactive and going after what you want. So I think as a result of that, like, you know, there were definitely times when I was passed up for promotional opportunities because I did not speak up and I didn't, I kind of didn't really understand how to navigate, you know, the workplace in the beginning. So, um, yeah, I mean, so that that was some of my failures, just kind of getting in my own way and just not really being as confident as I was, you know, leaving college and going into it, just losing kind of sight of, you know, why I'm here, that excitement and yeah, um, trying to figure things out. And, um, and then that can also um, turn into, you know, comparing yourself with other people, jealousy and yeah feeling entitled, like that just creates like all other, you know, kind of problems for can you. I poke so, around, can I poke around in your story just really quick, just because I think that yeah. people can really relate to the confidence piece and the missed opportunity, right? Because I mean, honestly, think about it. Like how many of us have missed an opportunity? And really, we, we don't want to tell anybody we missed up an opportunity, but that stuff really affects right. you, right? <laughs> like it does. Right. What I want to ask you is, how did you know you missed an opportunity if you didn't realize that you, if you didn't feel like you were putting yourself out there? Like, talk to us about that story or one or two stories um, about, you know, that time of your life where you didn't know what you know now and you really missed an opportunity, you know? Yeah, so when, um, so after my internship um, with the first company that I mentioned, I accepted a position as an HR assistant. So I literally started from the bottom. Right. Uh, and I, um, I started pursuing a master's degree. I started working on getting my HR certification. So um, I was just in this HR assistant role. And I was, I liked what I did, but I was also 
I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I'm about to have a master's degree. I'm about to be certified in HR. I'm at that time probably making between $16, $18 an hour. I'm, I'm like, what is going on? You know, this is, what's the next step for me? You know, is this, is this all that happens? Like, how do I get to the next level? So there was another young lady that, was in a similar role um, within another division of our company. So it was still HR, but it was like where I worked in the health plan division, she worked in the shared services division and she, we were peers. And um, the next level HR position became available. Um, and, and I was very interested in that opportunity. And I thought because I was doing such a good job, being an HR assistant, I know all my performance reviews were great. I always got good praises of my work. Um, I thought naturally they would just consider me for it. You know, I would. I did not imagine that they would pick somebody else. I just so I never said anything. I didn't apply for it. I just thought, hey, an opportunity became available. Surely they're going to give this to me because they talk about how good of a job I do all the time. So I, I wasn't even thinking about it. But they gave it to this other girl. And I was like, wow, you know, and I talked to my boss about that too. And I just said, this was, you know, I was interested in, you know, that position. Will, will there be other opportunities later? And she's just like, I had no idea that you were interested in moving up. Or, and I'm like, whoa, okay. Mm. And um, <laughs> I this was is, really, it I just was, like that too. It's just crazy. I know. I was just so shocked. Um, and just kind of looking back on that situation, I noticed um, some things that that girl was doing at first and this is my fault and this is what we tend to do sometimes like I made it a race issue mm -hmm. um and it really wasn't about that you know I think we're quick to say oh she must have got it she's white I'm black not saying that that doesn't happen in some situations because it absolutely does but really this was my fault like I did not take action and I did not express interest I was assuming that people would look at my hard work yeah making assumptions people would look at my hard work and they would just give that opportunity to me so Cassandra that is that's the nugget that that's that's the deep stuff that people we we all struggle we, we it happens you know we assume right. that somebody is going to advocate for us exactly and, that's just and that was me. That was a young Cassandra in right. the workforce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks Too for many sharing. Assumptions. That. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that story. I think that people can definitely um, relate to that because it's so palpable, right? Like when you miss an opportunity, yeah. and someone tells you, "If you just said something, I would have had your back." You know, <laughs> like I think <laughs> I totally, totally relate to that. And especially, you know, even though this is it's sort of controversial, the whole is it a race issue or not? Because, because in some ways we're not in the same room as, you know, when people of the same race are talking. So we don't know what was said. So it's always a mystery and you never want to be a race baiter, but I can understand how you could right. maybe mix, mix that. I could totally relate to that. And I totally understand. I think a lot of people can understand. So let's go into aha moments. I think we we're already segueing there, but I really want to allow for a moment for you as an expert, as a, as a, you know, as someone who's leading coins over gossip, career talks with Cassandra, for you to express any other aha moments, um, not just in your personal life, like your journey, but also in you talking to an array of younger women or women in your field or peers about, you know, career evolution or just up leveling themselves. Talk to us, talk to us about thought patterns that you've had to dispel in either yourself or others. What are some of those aha moments? Um, some of those aha moments. I would say really understanding what it is that you want. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that was a that was big for me when um, I figured out that once I do the work and actually figure out, okay, I'm saying that I want this position, I want this salary, really understanding, okay, and getting to the bottom of why why do I want that? What could that do for my life? Like, why am I so set on getting to that certain position or getting that salary? Is it because people are telling me that that's what I need to do? Or is that something that I really want and I've worked it out to where I understand this is what this is going to do for me? I've mapped out my career path and said, okay, if I do this, then it's going to get me to here in three years. Like, do I have a plan for why I want that? Or is that just what I'm being told? Um, That's the right thing to do. And um, once I really kind of settled into that and started doing the work, and for me, what that looks like in terms of career progression is I always look at, so right now I'm the director of human resources, um, and the natural next step for me is um, a vice president or chief human resources officer. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking at right now is job descriptions for those roles that I want. So, and just seeing like, okay, what's on this job description that, that I'm not currently doing now? Right. And how can I incorporate that into what I'm doing right now? Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's like clarifying the missing pieces. Right. And that's kind of how I've been building my career. Like I started looking at job descriptions of the positions that I want. Right. And I said, okay, I'm going to start doing this now so that when those opportunities become available, it's going to be an obvious fit. Like it's going to be undeniable, right? That Absolutely. that I am a fit for that position. So really mastering that process right. and doing work has helped me progress um, quite a bit in my career. Like I've, um, I've gotten to this level pretty quickly. Um, and it's from doing those things and really um, understanding what makes me happy so what do I like working on like what are the things that 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 energizes me um and really paying attention to that and making sure that I you know try to stay in that lane we're always going to have work that you know that's not our favorite thing to do (laughs) but you know it has to get done but if you stay focused on what makes you happy and try to stay in that pocket of, okay, I'm going to continue doing these things, staying like energized and understanding what that is, being aware of what that is, then you'll continue to be happy doing work that you enjoy. And then you will also continue to progress in your career. So I think like aha moments for me throughout my career it's just really has been understanding me and what it is right. that that I want, what makes me happy, what work makes, like I said, energizes me, makes me happy. Um, and the more you get to that place where you're working on that and understanding who you are, the better you can articulate that to other people. I think what I love about what I'm hearing from you is something that is a continual thread as career coaches or people who are just like us, who are in the, the, the spectrum of helping professionals, career counseling, career consultant, et cetera. What I'm hearing is how important self-awareness is. And I think it's yeah. a lot of people because we kind of undervalue what it is that we want because there is a level of you need to know what you want. You need to know what they need. You know, so it's like right. sometimes we can tilt the, the scale to be all about what they need and what about what connects to the coins, what gets the money, but we forget, <laughs> we forget. And it's funny, there's this, um, there's this tagline that this, it's an actually, it's like an alcoholic beverage company. There's a tagline that they use called, um, it's a, it's a, it's a marketing tagline and it's called joy will take you further. 
and it's for alcohol. It's an alcohol company. It's crazy. But that same concept to me is coming out in what you're saying, because if you don't know what you want, you're going to constantly feel frustrated chasing, well, in my opinion, chasing money and delivering on what people need, but not res- recognizing that you need to be about your long-term happiness. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. So I love yes. that aha moment. Are there any other aha moments you feel like you've um, brushed up upon, especially as you're serving women and feeling like they're coming at you with so many different things? Yes, salary negotiation is always a big thing. I hear that a lot. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. Um, as you know, you, we all know the statistics, you know, you know about women. Yes. <laughs> girl, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Talk to you us. Know, being, yes, underpaid, um, pay inequality. You know, we hear about this all the time. So, um One of the big things that I learned um, in terms of salary negotiation is I always have like this visual when I talk about it of being at a poker table. Um, And the employer, um, you know, they already are in a powerful position. You know, they have a strong hand of cards already. Right. So you have to come to the table you this know, with something that's going to change the game. Right? Come with change it. Come with, talk to us, Cassandra. Talk to us <laughs> this Saturday morning. Break it down. Break it down, Cassandra. So really understanding when you come to that table, you have to be ready to play the game. You have to know how to play the game. And you have to know what you want, why you want it, and be prepared to offer something for it. So a lot of people think that, you know, when they negotiate, they're just like, okay, I'm just going to negotiate just because I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Like never accept the first offer. I'm just going to automatically tell them I want $5,000 more and I have nothing to justify why I want $5,000 more. And that's just not going to work at the, at the table. Right. I mean, that person, that employer already knows their budget, you know, what they're, how far they're willing to go. You know, we don't know that information. So we really have to know, okay, why am I asking for more money? Right. And how I'm going to be able to, how I'm going to show them that I'm worth it like how can I articulate my worth for that amount of money that I'm asking for Um, and that can come in many forms right so if you've got uh, more education you know there may be a card for that that you can pull but you need to be able to show how that education is related to that job that you're going to be doing because you can't just have a master's degree in art and say (laughs) You know, and say that, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get $50,000 more for a finance position because I got my master's degree in art. You know, that makes no sense for them Right. just because you have a master's degree. So, I mean, education, um, maybe a a unique skill set, you know, that you have, a skill that you picked up that um, nobody else has or that it's. Um, a scarce marketplace like where a lot of people don't have it so something like that could be very valuable um, or come I've, I've done interviews before where I've understood what they were looking for and I've come prepared with my strategic plan of how I'm going to be able to solve that problem so if you know what the issues are what problems they're having and why they need that role Come prepared to talk about, okay, here's how we can solve that. Come come prepared with solutions to their problems. You know, that is also going to um, increase your negotiating power. So you really have to have a hand to play when you're trying to sit at the negotiation table. And that has worked really well for me over the years. Yeah. I think what has worked for me as well more recently is, um, has been um, – something that you said and, and, and a change of mindset is approaching the salary negotiation. Like I am a consultant and not just an employee. 
because I think what happens is, is if you approach it like you're an independently contract, obviously you're an employee, you're at the table, but if you, if you approach it like a consultant, you're going to start seeing the itemizing the level of work that they're asking for and making the justification more real and clear to them. Hey, what you're asking for actually equates to more work and you need to be very clear about what that work involves. Cause I'm finding exactly. that employers, like you said, don't know how to price jobs. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. The problem. They don't know the solution to their problem. They just know they want it to go away. They know it needs right. to be handled. So for me, I feel like that's been helpful in the confidence piece. Um, and then I think I really, really like what you're saying too about coming prepared with a proposal. That's been my pitch recently. Like if I'm coming to the table to negotiate, we're going to do negotiation and we're going to, you're going to see that I didn't come here for you to uh, quickly dismiss my offer. You need to come, you know what I'm saying? You need to acknowledge the proposal that I have on the table too. So I actually think that those are great, great aha moments and tools. Um, let's do this. Let's talk to you about resetting a, a career or restarting your career. What's your professional opinion about how to restart your career? Because some people, I don't know if you have endeavor, I don't know if you've had um, conversations with women who are trying to change their career, but statistics show at least 60 to 70% of America workforce hate their job or are disengaged. Mm -hmm. so I want to hear from you, especially from with your HR hat, like what has, what's your professional opinion on resetting? Resetting your career um, in terms of you've been out of the workforce for a while or you just want a career change? The career change, that latter piece. So you want a career change. Um, I would, that happens a lot, <laughs> like you said. Um, and um, I would say to do your research and figure out, you know, what is needed for that particular, for that career that you're trying to pursue. So um, sometimes when you do a career change, I mean, it's going to require you to make some, some sacrifices. Um, it could be, you know, you're, you're not at the same pay, you know, maybe this position that you want or this new career that you want it's not making the same amount of money that you're used to making um, or, you know, because you, you know, you've, um, you know, accrued some years of experience working in your previous career that, you know, you're kind of starting fresh when you do a career change. So you may have to take a pay cut, you know, so being prepared for that potentially, you know, getting some things organized in your personal life so that you can, you can handle that sacrifice of, you know, right. having to pay a um, pay cut if that's the case. But then also it may require you to go back to school um, and get educated, you know, on what that, that field or picking up a class or, um, you know, making some type of investment so that you have what you need um, to move forward with that new career. So I would say to definitely make sure that you do all your research and to have a plan in place. So prepare again personally. Okay, how is this going to affect, you know, my my livelihood? You know, am I still going to be able to pay bills? So just making sure that you consider all of those things. Hey. And you have a plan in place for that career change. And then also I would say to network with people in that industry. Mm. So LinkedIn is a great tool, right? I mean, I use LinkedIn faithfully. Do you? That's <laughs> you good. I do. I love LinkedIn. Um, I think it's underutilized by a lot of people. There are so many, yeah, so many perks and benefits to, to really, um, take it to you um, LinkedIn and I would do that um, for networking and connecting with people, maybe setting up some um, informational interviews is what I call it. Cause people love to talk about what they do, you know, no pressure. Like if you tell, if somebody reaches out to me and say, you know what, I see that you have a background in this and I really am interested in learning more about it and need some advice. I'm like, come over. I, I love to, talk about what I do because I'm passionate about my career. 
So looking for those people in that industry and asking like, hey, can I can I meet meet up with you over coffee or if they, you know, in in an office setting, just set up, you know, 15, 20 minutes of your time. I would love to learn more about what you do. I'm interested in pursuing a career in this, you know, in X, Y, Z, you know, just getting that advice and those tips and um, of, you know, what you need to do, what steps you need to take to, to um, move forward into that new career, as well as, it also allows you to be top of mind for some of those professionals when those opportunities become available. Right. So, right. You know, it's funny. It's, I, I totally appreciate your input on that question because I think there is a fear of change, especially with your career. Yeah. There's, a, there's a form of, and this is me and my intuition. I think the fear of change is natural, but I think also the fear of being vulnerable or appearing vulnerable in that career change is also natural because it's in, in essence, what, what one has to say is I'm changing my career because either I don't like what I'm doing or I have changed my desire. Like, you know what I mean? Like people evolve, people's desires change their makeup, like their, their family commitments, their family dynamics, whatever change companies change. Companies change, and then all of a sudden, the, 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 the position change. And the vulnerability in that is I need to find another place for me to park professionally, and I don't think where I'm at is, you know, so there's a, there's a sense of vulnerability that I think people might be afraid to express. And what I'm realizing over and over again when I do these interviews with all of the, all of, for this series of Upgrading Your Career, and when I ask that question, I'm hearing this continual thread of, you're probably going to do some of the same things you did to build your career up until that point, <laughs> you know, networking, researching, creating a plan, making sure your finances are, you tie up the loose ends on what your finances need to look like. But those tools now, LinkedIn, net, you know, having informational interviews, those are things that we can leverage. So it's just been good. And I think it inspires confidence when hearing someone like you say, these are the things you should be doing and you can do it. Don't overlook it, you know? So that's good. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the rapid fire questions? Because I'm ready. Yeah. All Let's right, cool. go. So the rapid fire <laughs> questions are short answers, but these are questions that I think are general questions that anyone asks around their career, and they're about upgrading our career. Obviously, that's the series we're in. If I ask you to, you know, kind of drill down on your answer, obviously you can expound a little bit more. So the first question is, what is Cassandra's best tip on improving your networking skills? Best tip on improving networking skills, I would say to uh, be strategic and to commit. Nice. Go ahead and drill down a little bit what strategic means. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, whenever I, just being intentional about it, you know, so whenever I go to networking events, I know the type of person that I want to connect with. Right. So making sure that you understand who you're trying to connect with, why, you're, why you want to connect with that person. And then the commit piece is making sure that you follow up and, and that you actually do carve out time for networking, you know, because it, it takes work. <laughs> it, does. it is. It takes work if you really want to, you know, build relationships and really get the benefit, you know, of those, you know, being in relationships with the right people. So agreed. Second question, best advice on finding a new job. Best advice on finding a new job. Research. Um, <laughs> yeah. Re yeah. I mean, research is that that's what you need to do. I mean, and you mean finding a new job just you're ready to leave your current job and you're looking for a new opportunity? Yeah, you know, I find that sometimes people, because, you know, people aren't just graduating college and getting a new job. Like, they don't go to their career center anymore. They're just finding a new job. And so sometimes they forget what they have to do or the landscape of finding a job has changed, right? So I research and networking. Absolutely. Networking for sure. For sure. All right, number three, best tip on personal branding. And all you do is brand you. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Number four, best strategy on crushing an interview. 
convince yourself first. Nice. Drill down on that. Let's let's hear more about that. Yeah, so if you, it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about already, really being self-aware and understanding um, why it is that you want that job, what you can bring to that job. If you know that, if you understand that and you really do your work and take time to assess and evaluate why you want that particular position, then you can articulate that to someone else. You know, so I would say really convince yourself first why you need to have that opportunity. If you can convince you first, you can convince somebody else. I love it. I love it. Number, I think we are number five. We might have touched up on this already, but best advice on negotiating salary. Yes, I'm just going to go back to saying know what you want, why you want it, and be prepared to say what you can offer for it. Sweet. Number six, best tip you ever heard about career success. Ooh, best tip I've ever heard about career success. Um, oh my God, so many things. Um, probably to... be the expert Mm. be the expert would be it's probably the best piece of advice that I've gotten like really I like being the go-to person so really under yes yes really understanding um everything there is about what you do um and being the answer to people's problems like having those answers so really focus on being the expert and mastering what you do i love it i love it i love that answer um number seven best song or success quote that motivates you work harder on yourself than you do on your job and that's by jim Rohn. good jim Rohn. we got some jim Rohn folks out here (laughs) Yes, I love him. Yes. Um, you know, the quote that's kind of weirdly enough motivated me <laughs> is Jim Rohn's <laughs> quote on uh, you are the average of your five closest friends. Yes. I don't know what it did for me, but when I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, I see what I got to do. <laughs> got to get some new friends. <laughs> not just that, but I was like, oh, but am I the one lowering the average? I hope I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Yeah. Number eight, what's your personal idea of success? Um, I would say being happy and living the life you want to live. Mm, agreed. And number nine, it's our last rapid fire question. What book would you recommend to the She Ventures tribe and why? So I don't know that this book is like widely known um but it is it has been one of my favorite books and I actually just read it like a few months ago and it's one by my bishop (laughs) Mm. um and it's called no opportunity wasted okay and it is amazing like life changing because um there are I think you would automatically assume that because it's by a bishop, like there's all these, like, it's like very religious or, you know, all these, you know, but it's not like it's, it's very um, practical um, and has these principles about success um, and things that you can do, like, you know, laid out very well, you know, steps that you can take, things that you can do um, to take advantage of, uh, to take advantage, excuse me, of opportunities and to understand how to identify opportunities. Um, um, it's just one of the best career books, I think, that I've read. Um, so, and then they, it also has exercises after each chapter that allows you to kind of process what it was that you just read and, um, and and work through it so it's almost like you have like your own workshop as -hmm. you're reading this book that you're going through so I I really like that and I think it would be helpful to a lot of people 
You know, I appreciate books that have end of the chapter questions and tasks. Because it just, I don't know, it makes me feel like the mentorship from the book is real. Like they're giving me actually. Yeah. Who's, what's your bishop's name? So we can make sure that I have it in the, the show notes. It is Bishop Joseph Walker the <laughs> Third. Nice. Yes. And then the ultimate. I, okay, go ahead. Oh, I can email that to you too if you want to oh, share it. Absolutely. And then the grand finale of question is, what's the number one thing you believe keeps people stuck in careers they don't enjoy? Uh, fear. Yeah. 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 And what's the What's the number one thing they should do to get unstuck? Um, to trust yourself. Nice. Nice. Spoken yeah. Like a true woman of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> trust yourself. Yeah. Listen, Cassandra, it's been a pleasure and a joy. I'm honored that you made the time to get on this uh, podcast episode. I feel like there's a lot of things you said from your story, your background to your aha moments, and obviously the rapid fire question answers uh, that people can pull from. And I'm just really, really excited about the journey you're on, especially with the upcoming conference, uh, Coins Over Gossip. I think it's in the fall. And I'm just thankful that we crossed paths and we now have a relationship and a network. This podcast episode has been brought to you by People's Insurance Services, where protecting is caring. If you're looking for competitive rates for your auto, home, or commercial insurance needs in Florida, call 954-733-8500. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode, please take the time to hit subscribe and leave a rating and review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher.